But I'll tell you the miracle of tonight is, is crazy and crazier to me than the size of any star is that though we are but a vapor, you and me, and tiny and frail, we are marked by majesty. And we have been created in the very image of the God who breathes out the stars and put the universe into place. You and I are fashioned and formed and ordained by the God of all creation. We are fearfully and wonderfully made, you and I. We are a miracle. You're a miracle sitting in the building tonight. If I could just remind you just for a moment, you are somebody incredibly special. Let me just dial back to the beginning, and I, I know you know this already, but in the very, very beginning, here's how you happened, okay? One cell from your mom found one cell from your dad. Now, there's more involved in that than that, but that's enough for us right now. And by the way, we should applaud the one cell from your dad because that one cell did a pretty heroic thing to be the one cell in the story that we're talking about tonight. One cell from your mom met up with one cell from your dad, each one carrying 23 chromosomes. The one from your mom was carrying half of her DNA. The one from your dad was carrying half of his DNA. And those two cells met and merged into one single cell. And when they did, those chromosomes matched, and they began to form together a brand new DNA code using four characters, four nucleotides. They begin to write out what we have now discovered is the three billion character description of who you are written in the language of God. They wrote out your DNA, your human genome of three billion characters made up of those four simple nucleotides. And when they did, they described who God had ordained you to be in that one little simple cell. Scientists say if you took the DNA out of that one little cell and stretched it out, that DNA would be six feet long. Three billion characters stretched out to six feet long. So amazing that if I were to read your DNA, reading one character per second, night and day, it would take me 96 years just to read the description of you. And when they formed together, they wrote out and painted a picture which had never been written before in the history of humankind. And then that cell did the unthinkable. It set out to build that model from one cell. I'm telling you, you are a miracle sitting in this building tonight. And you have come a long, long way. I mean, here you are, this may not be in the family photo album, but here you are <laughs> at three days old. 16 cells of you. You say, what in the world is that? It's a 16 cell human embryo on the tip of a safety pin at incredible magnification. So by now that one cell had turned into 16 cells on its way to making the 75 trillion cells that make up your body tonight. Every one of those 75 trillion cells containing that six feet of the three billion character DNA code that you. There's so much DNA in your body, by the way. If you stretched it all end to end, there'd be enough DNA to go to the moon and back inside your body. 178,000 times. That's how amazing God has made you to be. 75 trillion cells in your body. And when I told you that, 50,000 of those cells died and were replaced by brand new cells when I told you that. And then just now, 50,000 more cells died and were replaced by brand new cells. It's happening every three seconds, day and night, all the days of your existence. And you wonder why you're tired all the time. I'll tell you, you're doing some amazing stuff night and day. We're miracles, you and me. I love the way Augustine said it, one of the great fathers of the church and of the faith. He just nailed it when he said it like this. Men go abroad to wonder at the height of mountains, 
the huge waves of the sea, the long course of rivers, the vast compass of the ocean, the circular motion of the stars, but they pass by themselves and they don't even notice. In the womb, miracles happening every moment. Here you are at five months in the womb. You remember those days, those were the good old days. <laughs> and just miracles happening every second. Let me tell you about one. Million optic nerve endings left the optic nerve center of your brain in the womb, headed for a million optic nerves that had left your eye. And they had to meet and match their exact partner. One million looking for one million. And when they found their exact partner out of a million and matched up together, in that instant you had sight. And anyone would tell you that to this moment, the most technologically advanced thing on planet Earth is your eye. Oh, but it didn't do you any good because when that moment happened, you just had one piece of skin completely covering your eyeball. But as I read in one textbook, miraculously and mysteriously at about the sixth month, a little cutting device appeared and it cut perfectly that piece of skin. And you had eyelids for the very first time in your mother's womb. You are fearfully and wonderfully made and the God of the heavens is the one who fashioned you together and he knows your name tonight and he knows every single thing there is to know about you and he's made you a promise that for those who trust in him, he will literally hold them in his hand and carry them all the days of their life. This Psalm 33 that talks about a star breathing God turns an interesting corner. It says, for he spoke and it came to be. He commanded and it stood fast. That's power and awe. But now it gets very personal. From heaven, the Lord looks down and sees all mankind. From his dwelling place, he watches all who live on earth. He who forms the hearts of them all and is intimately acquainted with everything they do. And then he goes even further. And he says, the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him on those who hope in his unfailing love, and here comes his promise, to deliver them from death and to keep them alive in famine. And that is the promise tonight because this building and our world is filled with hurting people, with lives that are spinning out of control, with pain that we, don't, we didn't ask for or could never imagine. And God is making a promise to us tonight. He's saying, I am a universe maker and I am a heart former, but I'm also big enough to be intimately acquainted with all the circumstances of every one of your lives. And I promise you, no matter what comes in this lifetime, no matter how difficult the road or how dark the night, I will hold on to you and I will literally hold you together and carry you through any and every circumstance that ever comes your way any moment on this planet. It's the promise of God. And you say, well, man, that sounds good, but how do I know that's true in my life right now, Louis? I mean, that's really what we want to know tonight. And I'll tell you how you can know tonight that God will always hold you together no matter what. It's by looking a little deeper into the human body and it's a little protein molecule called laminin. Yeah, that's about what I felt the first time I heard that. <laughs> Long story short, the tour was winding down last time around. We were in Tyler, Texas. The night was over. A guy walks up to me. I wish I could tell you the whole story. It was so of God. 
introduces himself to me, says, how are you doing? I just want to say hello. I said, it's nice to meet you. He says, you guys winding the tour down? Uh, where are you going to go from here? I said, well, I'm on my way back home to Atlanta, Georgia. He said, well, what's next for you? I said, I'm going to be preaching the next two Sundays for my pastor back in Atlanta. He said, oh, cool. What are you preaching on? I said, well, the series is on the glory of God and the human body. He said, that's really amazing. I'm a molecular biologist at the university down the road. G give me your talk. And I was like, oh, wow. I wasn't quite yet ready to unload the talk for a molecular biologist. So I kind of stumbled through what I had and he's kind of being kind and gracious and like, uh-huh, that's good. And then he says, well, what's your big left hook? You gotta have a left hook, a big finish, right? I said, I don't have a left hook yet. He said, oh, Louie, oh man, your left hook is laminin. And I'm, I'm totally blank on laminin. He goes, Louie, it's a cell adhesion molecule, protein molecule. Do you know about proteins? I'm like, no. He said, Louis, cells organize into certain molecular structures and that determines what protein there are. There are between 10 and 60,000 proteins in the human body. We don't even know how many proteins are in the human body, but one of them is a cell adhesion molecule. It's organized into this certain structure and that tells the cell what its job is in the body. And this one is a cell adhesion molecule. And I'm like, all right. He said, no, Louis, it's like the rebar of the human body. The steel they put in the concrete when they lay the foundations of things, it's that stuff. It's, it's holding your membranes together. It's the glue of the human body, Louis. It's laminin. You've got to tell them about laminin. And I'm like, I promise you, I'm going home and tell them about laminin. And I'm sure when I do, revival is going to sweep across the church and probably around the world when I tell them. He said, no, 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 no. You've got to see laminin. I'm like, okay, let's see it. He said, no, 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 you need to go look it up online. You need to go Google laminin. I'm like, I don't even know how to spell laminin. <laughs> Takes his card out, he writes on the back, L-A-M-I-N-I-N. -I -I -N. I'm like, okay, I cannot wait to get to my computer and get on Google, click on images, type in laminin, and I'm waiting, and these little thumbnails come up on the screen, and I'm like, That's laminin, the cell adhesion molecule. Woo! <laughs> I am so excited. I am beside myself. I cannot believe what I'm seeing. I love laminin. I'm so fired up. <laughs> you should see laminin, I guess. That's the thing, right? Okay. Here is a scientific diagram of the laminin cell adhesion molecule that's holding your body together right now, okay? This is what I found right here. No, come on, that's crazy. <laughs> that's just crazy. I'm, I just can't believe it. I emailed that guy back so fast, I'm like, wow, 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 what in the world? He said, you want to see an actual laminin molecule? I'm like, oh no, man, the diagram was cool for me. I'm happy with that. Don't, don't bother sending anything else. I'm like, yes! And he sends me this image, an electron microscopic image of an actual laminin protein molecule. It looks just like this. Like how crazy is that? That the stuff that holds our bodies together, that's holding the lining of your organs together, holding your skin on, is in the perfect shape of the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. And immediately I'm thinking about the words of Paul in Colossians 1. You know this beautiful passage where Paul's talking about the supremacy of Christ and the sufficiency of Christ. He says, for by him, talking about Jesus Christ, all things have been created, things in heaven and things on earth. All things were created by Jesus and for Jesus. But then the next verse goes on to say this, it's crazy. And he, Jesus, is before all things and in him, that is in Jesus Christ, all things hold together. 
It's right, it's right there. I'm like, of course they do. Of course they do. Everything holds together in Jesus Christ. And he goes on at the end of this paragraph and he just tells the story of grace. He says, for God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in Christ and through Christ to reconcile to himself all things by making peace through his blood shed on a cross. <laughs>